Blackmagic just dropped a brand new immersive cinema camera, 8K per eye, 90 frames per second, and Apple approved for Vision Pro. And guess what? We have it right here at South by Southwest. Not just a quick look, but an exclusive deep dive with Blackmagic own rep, Matt, breaking down exactly who this camera is for, what makes it so special, and why it's gonna be shaking up the entire immersive filmmaking industry. It is 30,000 US dollars, so if you are thinking about buying it or renting one, you need to hear these details before making that call. And trust me, some of the specs absolutely game changing. Let's get into it. Hey guys! Hey man! Hey, what you. do we have here? Ah, so this is our Ursa Cine Immersive Camera. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was specifically designed to shoot Apple Immersive Video mm -hmm. for the Apple Vision Pro. Nice. So, wow, is that the, the feet of the camera right now, right there? That's right, yeah, you can see the tripod of our camera there Ooh. a little bit. Um, yeah, so it's shooting a full 180 degrees uh -huh. uh, with dual lenses, so you're getting a stereoscopic image. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's gonna be producing an 8K image per eye mm -hmm. uh, in 90 frames a second. So you're gonna get a really high quality image out of this camera. Nice, so, so what is the field of view of the lens? I see like pretty wide. It's very wide, yeah, so it's delivering to 180 180 degree field of view. 180 degrees. Oh, let's see. I kind of see behind my hand. It's more than 180 right there. Yeah, you can actually see a little bit beyond, uh, but the platform itself is 180 degrees. Oh, so it over capture more than 180 and then put it back in. That's right. That's uh, right. I see the top and bottom to crop. So, what is the field of view of top and bottom? Yeah, so if you look actually at our LCD here, ah. so you, this is a reference camera. of what the 180 degree field of view is. Oh. And so it's cropped in a bit uh -huh. as compared to what's coming out of the SDI feed, which oh, is the raw so feed. Oh, so different, okay. That's right. Yeah, and, and this is the raw SDI output and that is the actual final format. Yeah, this is a reference to what the final format will be. Uh, so this is kind of your framing guide. Okay. Uh, and actually here you see this small box. Mm -hmm. That actually gives you a rough field of view of what you will actually see in the Vision Pro itself. Oh, wait. So that tell, helps tell you with that framing. Box. Tell, tell, describe to me that box in the middle. What, yes. what does that mean? So that box here, and we can zoom in, actually uh, shows roughly what you will see in terms of your field of view in the uh -huh. Apple Vision Pro. Uh -huh. So it can help filmmakers understand how they need to frame the shot uh, for the viewer's final field of view. Got it. So one thing I do note on the lens, there's a full sensor right here on the lens. What, what those sensor does? Does it capture depth data? What is that? Yeah, so let me ask about that one real quick and maybe we'll, uh, maybe I can come back to you on that one. Okay, okay, okay. So the microphone's right here? Yeah, so you have a witness microphone up here, mm -hmm. and this is a stereo microphone. Okay. Uh, and you do also have two full-size LX XLRs on uh -huh. the back here mm -hmm. that you can feed external audio to. Nice. So tell me the resolution again, the capture resolution. Yeah, capture resolution is 8160 by 7200 per eye. Is it a gyro inside? What's the leveling system go? Like, can I move the camera like crazy? Like, like, how, how is that operated? Yeah, we don't recommend that you move the camera a lot and shake it a lot because uh, when you're viewing things in the Apple Vision Pro, mm -hmm. uh, the viewer's head is actually the thing that's going to be per panning or tilting mm. the camera. Oh. Uh, we do have a gyro. Oh, uh, you do have a gyro? Yeah, the gyro is built in like with all of our Ursa cameras. Uh -huh. And that does give you data that could potentially help for stabilization. But in general, you want to have a very steady shot for mm. immersive, as you know. How can you level the, the, the camera? Like, I see the guy right there, but you have a lot of gyro leveler to help people to prep? Yeah, so inside we have a grid. Uh -huh. um, and one of the options in the grid, which I can go to here, we go to monitor, and then we turn on our grid, and then I there we go. Actually, yeah, for the LCD, I have the grid on. If I go to this page here, I choose horizon. Mm -hmm. That actually shows the horizon based off of the gyro data. So as I tilt this camera, uh -huh. you'll see that this reticle oh. here is actually uh, a little bit higher than it uh -huh. should be. So if I tilt it you back. You can align that. Now you can align So that. you have all this like, control to, to help you help the filmmaker to get the perfect level That's before right. you roll the camera. That's what, right. What about coloring? Do you have false color, histogram? Do you have any nice stuff like this to help? Yeah, we do. We have false color built in, mm -hmm. and so that helps you define what your exposure would be. Let me point to this scene, which has some nice yeah, light this, on it. Yeah. 
and actually I'll operate from the assistant side here. Yeah. And so I can turn on our false color. Mm. And you can see the false color shows up there. Mm -hmm. And I'll actually put it on the SDI as well. And oh, so there you go. That gives you an indication of how the exposure is throughout the frame. Yeah, well, what is a good exposure? What is a bad exposure? What's the color really mean? Is that so there's no necessarily good and bad, but it just gives you information to judge where your exposure is. So uh -huh. anything that's red is potentially overexposed. Mm -hmm. So those lights, which would be normally overexposed. Yeah, and that's are, gone. Can't yeah, that. okay. yeah, there's no additional detail there. Um, and your blues, you're starting to lose some detail. And your purples, there is no detail uh, available to be pulled up. Yeah. So that may indicate that you want to increase your exposure um, or open up your uh, take off an ND filter mm -hmm. or adjust your shutter angle. Nice. I also just see it, you use a specialty battery. Can it tell us a little bit about the mounting option, the power option here for the camera? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, this camera is powered off of a, off of a B mount battery. B mount, not V mount, not yeah. go mount, but B mount. Yeah, okay. B as in black magic, uh, <laughs> that, that kind of mount. So the B mount, we're using the B mount batteries because they are 24 volt batteries mm -hmm. um, that are very useful in powering our camera, but also the other accessories you can connect to the camera. Uh, uh, and so we have the B mount, uh -huh. and you can also swap that B mount out uh -huh. for a V mount or a gold mount. Oh, so it's interchangeable. That's right. Amazing. And yeah. said, you said that you can other accessories. So I can attach a monitor, a microphone, I can run the power in the camera? Yeah, so you have on the, there we go, we can go over here with yep. this. Uh, you have two uh, USB ports here oh. and a third USB port here, and you can actually power accessories based on So those are power these. cores, not data ports. That's right. Well, they're also data ports as well, so you can share your internet connection from your phone to your camera. Oh, uh, for live streaming. Okay. That's right, for live streaming and other purposes. Mm -hmm. um, we also have... Yeah, you uh, have like Ethernet right here, you have like, tell me about the I.O. Like you have two yeah. SDI, but what, what SDI is that? All right, so let's go top to bottom on yeah. our uh, video I.O. or on, my, on our I.O. So we have our USB connection. Yeah. That's for updating the camera or driving accessories. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have uh, two SDI outs. Uh -huh. They're both 12G SDI outs. 12G SDI. So 8K per, per eyes? Uh, you can get uh, ultra high def at 60 frames a second. Oh, wow. Okay. Yep. And currently, that is outputting a single eye mm -hmm. uh, over both. Okay. So we're not getting independent left and right at the moment through mm -hmm. this camera. So what is the third one? Yeah, so two SDI ports for video output. Uh -huh. And then the third SDI port is a reference in and a time code in. Time code, okay, time code port, okay. Yeah, time so code port. you can feed a genlock signal or a time code signal in through that third SDI. Genlock, okay, got it. That's right. I thought you have an Ethernet cable and then the power cable. The Ethernet cable, what, what does that do? Yeah, so this is a 10G Ethernet cable. 10G, okay. And so that allows you to do a variety of things. Mm -hmm. You can control the camera remotely, mm -hmm. you can manage the camera remotely, so adjust your settings or whatnot. With ATEM, like with the other Blackmagic product? Uh, yeah, or with the camera control software. Okay. Through that 10G Ethernet port, you can also control the camera settings mm -hmm. uh, using our REST API. Nice. I see the the power is a standard 12 pin, standard limo battery. Like, yeah. So the power. Let me go ahead and show it there. See power connector. That is a standard 12 pin connector. I saw your hotspot. I just unplug connector. it. From, from, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you can unplug it. Right now we're on battery as oh, well. Okay. So. Uh, that that you know uh, yeah. gives you that redundancy you might want. That's awesome. I, I saw the media is crazy on this side. Just tell me a little bit about the, the, the storage you use. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and actually, can I tell you one other thing yeah. about the 10G port? Yes, please. So the other interesting thing about this 10G port is it actually lets you mount this uh, this media module remotely as if it were network attached storage. Oh. So you can access your files directly from this camera without ever pulling your media dock. So or you your can DIG with the camera. Yeah. Yeah, so you can pull the files out of the camera without ever pulling the media module out of the camera. That is so smart. So it's really yeah. good for broadcast, built for the future in mind, huh? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So tell me about media storage. This is like crazy right here. M2 something? Yeah. yeah. What is that? So this is our, our media module. Uh -huh. And let me go ahead and open it up here and pull it out. Oh, why the camera's still on? Oh, yeah. it's hot swallowable. Oh my it, god, god. It is hot the swallowable. The camera's still on and just pull it right there. Okay. <laughs> 
So this is, these are M2 modules in here. Yeah, what is um, an M2 module? So M2 is a SSD, and so there is a small RAID in here of SSDs to get us the throughput we want to capture from this camera. What is the data throughput to the, to the camera? Like how yeah. many per second sending it to the media unit? So it depends on the codec you're choosing and the compression you're choosing. Our codec is B-RAW, mm -hmm. and then we have multiple levels of compression. Got it. So our tech specs on the page on our website will have all the different data rates for all the different compression so ratios. So if I'm running low on storage, can I do a ProRes? Do I have a compressed format the camera can capture instead of just like crazy B-RAW? Yeah, so this camera captures B-RAW uh -huh. only um, because that gives you the flexibility in the post. It's a really powerful and efficient codec, mm -hmm. especially in DaVinci Resolve. It works really well with our B-RAW files natively. Got it. So is it a focus? Do I need to focus the lens or just auto-focus everything? Like, is it, what's yeah. the distance of the lens? Yeah, so these lenses, they are fixed focus, fixed iris. Oh, so it's really easy to use. That's right. It's really easy to use. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, they're pre-calibrated, and that calibration is actually loaded into the B-RAW file and travels with that file all the way through post-production. So no stitching, like no stitching necessarily. Yeah, no stitching. Um, it is all, all the data that is needed is actually held in the B-RAW file itself. Nice. What is the IPD? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, let me get back to you on that one. Okay. What's the focal distance? Like when, when I when, when am I too close to the lens? I wanted to. Yeah. So so general um, so general kind of best practices for the focal distance of this is at three. Oh, sorry, two meters is kind two of meter, ideal. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, up to one meter, you're still okay, but you'll start to lose focus as you get closer Got it. than that. So it's like probably arm length. My my, my short arm yeah. length is a good distance. That's a good and, distance. And then here is a good distance to like. The frame. Exactly, yeah. Two meters is kind of a comfortable distance mm -hmm. to actually interact with somebody in a conversation. Yeah. And that's what you want to try to recreate here is mm -hmm. that sense of presence. If we're only one meter apart, mm -hmm. that's a really intimate moment. Uh, that might be appropriate. That's too much, guys. Don't do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I heard this thing have built in ND. Can you tell us a little bit more about the ND system here? Yeah, so the ND filters are critical. Let's go ahead and yeah. Turn this around. So first ever immersive camera have an ND filter. Show us. Yeah. Now go ahead and zoom out. So this is our plus and our minus for uh -huh. our NDs, yeah. and that's the primary way to control your exposure mm -hmm. outside of your shutter angle and yeah. your ISO. So as I go ahead and cycle through that, Ooh. we go to clear, uh, two stops, four stops, and eight stops of ND. A stop. And so that gives you the control in a brightly lit environment mm -hmm. to bring your exposure down without having to change your shutter angle or your ISO. How about a post workflow? Like, like after you capture the footage, how much you can share like, about a post workflow? Uh, right now we're talking about just mainly the camera because mm -hmm. that's what we're covering in this particular show. And nice. then we're going to go into more details on the post workflow at nice. NAB. Nice. So I saw a lot of fancy accessory here. Is it coming with the camera? Like people buy the camera, can they get the top handle, the, the shoulder mount, and also whatever this, this thing is? Like, yeah, what is included? So, so yeah, in terms of accessories, mm -hmm. uh, the camera body itself, the battery mounting plate is going to come with it, the top handle, mm. and the base plate. Oh, this whole thing? That's right. Oh, wow. That's, That's right. a lot of stuff. Oh, how much is it? <laughs> yeah, so the camera runs for 29995 uh -huh. and that includes those accessories uh -huh. and also the AC power supply and the Pelican case that will be going with it. Nice. Uh, and it also comes with the eight terabyte media module. Oh, it comes with the eight terabyte. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So the you can shoot oh, right wow. out of the box. Wait, oh, amazing. So the eight terabyte on website costs a thousand dollars. Does it come with it? Yeah, the, on the website, the eight terabyte costs sixteen hundred dollars, but it actually comes with the camera, so you can shoot uh, right out of the case. You make a lot of people very happy just now. Yeah, that made me really happy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're just really excited to see what creators are going to do with this camera. You know, we think it's bringing a level of cinematic quality to the immersive medium that uh, hasn't been achieved before, and so we're very excited to see what creators like yourself are going to do with it. Nice. So, for more information, how people can find out more information if they want to learn more. Yeah. So so go to blackmagicdesign.com and go to our Ursa Cine uh, page where there will be additional tech details about the Ursa Cine immersive camera and the ability to pre-order the camera. Nice. Awesome. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank, thank you. you, Matt. Thank you.